Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and uh, I've been sick for the last few days, in fact the last week, and well, apparently Boeing software has as well, and frankly, when the story came out last Thursday and Friday, everyone was asking me to do another story on it, and at the same time, uh, you know, having been exhausted, I kind of... Well, I didn't want to crap on Boeing anymore, to be honest, but, well, you know, yeah, it, this stuff just writes itself, unfortunately. Uh, so what happened was on Thursday, there was an aerospace safety advisory panel meeting where Starliner came up and there was talk about the pro uh, software problems. And I think Jim Chilton sort of alluded to the fact that there was another problem that they fixed in flight and they should be really happy that they were able to fix this problem in flight. Whereupon everyone in social media was like, wait, you had another problem that you didn't tell anyone about? And so the next day they got everyone back on for another conference call. So, yeah, Boeing Starliner flight, as you know, early on, straight after stage separation, after the capsule separated, it got confused because it read the wrong time and was thinking it was like 11 hours later in the flight, it had the wrong attitude. Its uh, thrusters were firing too much, it burned through a bunch of fuel. The other problem, well, there was a communication problem, which we'll mention, but the other problem they alluded to was happening just before re-entry. So for re-entry, they perform the deorbit burn, which slows the spacecraft down, and then it has a service module on the bottom. So they have to jettison that so that the heat shield on the spacecraft gets exposed and the spacecraft can re-enter. Now, to move the service module away from the spacecraft, the service module had a series of maneuvers programmed into it using its uh, thrusters. And apparently, if it had performed the maneuver as it was programmed, it was very likely it would have crashed back into the capsule. Now, it's not clear how fast it would, this would have done this, but if you had hit the capsule with the service module at significant speed, it might have damaged the heat shield and that would have been a loss of vehicle situation if the heat shield had been damaged. That being said, you know, that may not have happened. It's not really clear. But what, what was interesting was that they admitted that they would not have found this problem if it wasn't for the earlier timing problem, which led them to go back through and do a bunch of extra simulations to make sure everything was working correctly. And they found that the thruster firings were not correctly mapped. So when you request a series of maneuvers, when it has to map the requested maneuvers to a series of thruster firings, and the thrusters fire by opening and closing valves. So they have a valve mapping for the maneuvering when the spacecraft has a service module and the capsule joined together. And then after the service module was jettisoned, they were supposed to switch over to a different set of uh, valve mappings and apparently that was wrong and it was going to end up with a bad maneuver and potential loss of crew and vehicle and look mad skill you know respect to the engineers who in the middle of the night ran these extra simulations figured out there was a problem fixed the problem and uploaded it you great work guys but why was this not done before flight. This is, you know, something you would have seen surely in an integrated test of all the hardware. You know, this is, um, this makes me very, very concerned. I mean, so I, I sort of po I joke posted this Billy Eilish meme saying, oh, you know, I'm still wondering why Boeing is asking for 60% more money than SpaceX. And, you know, that is actually from uh, an Office of the Inspector General review that looked at the commercial crew program and concluded that Bo Boeing was getting 60% more uh, cash than SpaceX for the same thing. And they actually sent out a response, a PR response to this, challenging NASA's Office of Inspector General's conclusions on this. And it includes this quote, Starliner development and flight prices incorporate the rigorous design, test and verification approach we proposed, leaving no stone unturned to ensure we deliver a quality vehicle and service to our customer. Boy, yes, um, they left no stone unturned. I, I, I really think it's unfortunate because Boeing clearly has a good history of being a good company, but 
Um, it just seems nothing is going right for them. And I really, I, I want them to succeed. I, I do. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm a SpaceX fan. I'm a Boeing fan. I'm a NASA fan. I want everybody just to be, hey, I even want Iran's rocket to succeed. And yeah, I know the response that the guy posted on Twitter was a bit ridiculous. And let's not even talk about the kid's spacesuit thing. So, yeah. So it sounds like NASA is now going to, go through a whole process review procedure with Boeing, probably making sure that all the tests are actually being run in a simulated environment. Like, I mean, look, we all know SpaceX had that physical failure. It had an explosion. It had its own software problems. You know, they just weren't mission destroying. Certainly the abort would have been a very bad thing, but we didn't see that. One thing that does actually really concern me, by the way, is that these bugs that were found, these the, the reason they were found was because they were part of the standard software execution pass, right? They weren't some like weird contingency situation. These were all, both of the, the timing at the start and the thruster mapping, these were like straight up in the main execution path. These things should have been tested a million times. And the fact that they weren't tested and that these are on the main paths, leads me to believe that the less used bits of the software are probably even worse tested. And that is very, very worrying. Uh, another problem that was discussed on the Boeing side was the communications. And they have attributed it to that having high noise in the antennas, which may have been due to cell phone towers on the ground interfering with the spacecraft at low altitude. They didn't anticipate that that would have been a problem at station altitude, but of course, you gotta now go and test all this stuff and find out. So I see that there's gonna be a lot of review going on. We're probably not gonna find out whether Boeing gets to fly or is forced to fly another OFT test. Wait, okay, ATM machine, Never mind. Um, but, but I have heard today from Eric Berger that uh, SpaceX's DM2 mission, the follow-up, the cr first crewed launch on a Dragon 2 capsule to the space station is provisionally scheduled for May the 7th. That is currently a, an eight-day mission. However, everything is still in flux. It could move earlier or it could move later, but that is what is sort of penciled in on the calendar. This Everything is fluid and they're still not even sure well, they still haven't made a call on whether they might extend this to be a longer mission because there's definitely pressure to make that happen so they get maximum use of the International Space Station. Elsewhere, boy, today has been really exciting in space because, of course, we've had the NASA um, White House request for the NASA budget and it's looking very similar to what we saw last year. Now they're very much saying we want lots of money to go to the moon to by 2024 and um, they want to cancel w first again um you know w first wide field infrared survey telescope it's a, a big telescope that is based on an old nro telescope remember the national reconnaissance or office they gave nasa a couple of their spy satellites and said turn these into space telescopes well w first is one of those Sophia, they want to cancel Sophia. That is the, the 747 that carries the awesome telescope in the back. And these are, of course, to funnel money towards the James Webb Space Telescope. I think the main factor I see here is that James Webb is like, you know, Northrop Grumman and W. First and Sophia don't have any big contractors behind them. Uh, one actual thing is that NASA responded and they said, uh, so the White House has basically said, do not fly Europa Clipper on uh, an SLS. And NASA's response has said, oh yeah, we could actually fly it on a Delta IV Heavy. It would cost, we would save $1.5 billion. And that estimate is basically subtracting 2 billion for the cost of an SLS and adding half a billion for the cost of flying on a Delta IV. That would be a Delta IV Heavy with uh, probably a Star 48 BV kick stage. And to do that, it would still have, it would have to do extra gravity assist. So the spacecraft would have to fly by Venus and Earth a couple of times to kick itself up to Jupiter. And that would actually complicate the design of the satellite because now it would have to be able to go closer to the sun. So you, you need extra thermal design. An alternative 
is that NASA could use a Falcon Heavy in fully expendable mode, again with a Star 48 kick stage. That would be able to kick out to the asteroid belt and then come back with a deep space maneuver and kick off the Earth and go to Jupiter. So by using a less proven rocket combination, they would not have to worry so much about the thermal issues on their satellite design. So it's interesting to see or hear how this is playing out with possible uh, you know, people that are involved. Because, you know, it's all compromises. Sure, there's definitely a group of people that still want it to fly on SLS, but I don't see that happening at that point. Either way, I mean, I'm obviously looking forward to a, a Europa mission. And yes, congratulations to the Solar Orbiter team who got their spacecraft away last night. It launched during the middle of the Academy Awards on an Atlas 411. That's my favourite because it has a single solid rocket motor and it has to power slide off the launch pad. So yeah, they're off into deep space. They're going to do a bunch of gravity assists and get down close to the sun and sample the solar atmosphere and look down on the poles. So that is going to be fantastic. It's going to, of course, have seven to ten years, depending upon how long the mission goes. But yeah, it's got its start and we'll be watching it. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.